Hi guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're having a look at some common and some not so common key commands in Cubase that will speed up your workflow. So when we're moving from uh, learning a DAW or a program for the first time, spend a lot of time finding the commands that will help us to do what we want. And often there's uh, key commands that will enable us to do those actions quicker. And Cubase is full of uh, key commands that you can use. And once you start to dive a little deeper, you'll find that you can assign new key commands to do all sorts of cool things. So we'll have a look at both the standard key command that I think are the most important as well as some custom key commands and macros and we'll start diving into that. But hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is Tomud and I run this channel called Sifter Studios. And on here we do media composing tutorials, Cubase tips and tricks and freelance lifestyle talks from time to time. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to subscribe. So I've been wondering uh, what the best uh, way to show off uh, some cool key commands would be. Uh, and I've kind of settled on uh, grouping them by window. So hopefully that will make sense. Um, we'll just jump right into it. Uh, when you start a new project in Cubase, uh, you might want to record something. Depending on your uh, preferences, uh, you can assign the record arm that you see here to change when you change tracks. So that, that will be helpful. Uh, but if we move to a audio track, we'll get some of the quick ones out of the way. S uh, is solo, M, mute, R is record arm, and this little guy, monitor, shift D. And it's set up for my voice right now. So let's say I want to start recording. I can do that by hitting the asterisk uh, on the numpad, for example. Space will start and stop playback. These are pretty uh, standard across different DAWs. Letter C uh, toggles the metronome playback. Let's delete that. Using backspace, by the way. Let's have a look at zooming. Zooming, you use uh, G and H. H zooms in, G zooms out. Shift H uh, does that uh, vertically, and Shift G is zooming in. You can also do that by dragging with uh, your mouse right here, or using these small icons right here, if you want to. Okay, I've recorded a quick bass part. Let's have a listen. Okay, I'm gonna open it up in the key editor and we'll have a look at what key commands to use here. First of all, I'm gonna quantize this and key command for that is Q. Uh, but I'm gonna, I, I used, I used a little bit of triplets and a little bit, so I'm gonna do it in, in parts. Okay, let's just put a little bit of swing on that, quantize, randomize a little bit, and let's swing it. Like that. Okay, cool. If I want to move all of this to the left or to the right. Say this was on uh, the wrong, in the wrong place. I could move them by doing uh, control right or left. And 
that moves uh, what I've selected. Uh, this could be a note or it could be a region or whatever. It moves it based on the quantize uh, length or the, the note value. So if I change this to quarter notes, it's going to move. And depending on if you have the grid or the grid relative uh, selected, it's going to behave differently. So just um, have a play with those. All right, so if I have a audio region and I want to uh, move the beginning or the end of uh, that region, I can do that by doing Alt and then right or left key. And if I want to move the end, add Shift into the mix. If I want to change the tempo uh, at the exact spot that I'm at, I can hit Shift T and say 135 and it will change uh, the tempo. If you're using a tempo track like I am, then it will change uh, the line that you're currently on. So it won't add a new point data point, but it will just change the line that you're on basically. To do that, uh, you can uh, hit Control T and that will bring up the tempo track editor in which you can add points as you wish by holding Alt or Option and just clicking. If you'd like to uh, insert a crossfade between two uh, regions like this, uh, highlight them both and press X. You can also do that by hitting the selector tool by hitting two on your keyboard and making a selection, hitting X to make that fade bigger. If you want to loop something, you can do so by uh, first selecting what you want to loop and hitting P to uh, make the locators uh, go there and then hitting the slash on your numpad to total loop on or off. If it's on, it's purple. If it's off, it's gray. If you like working with markers like I do, you can uh, jump to the different markers by uh, pressing shift N to jump forward and shift B to jump backwards. N and B is also used uh, for jumping between different events. So let's find a place where we can do that. I have this one selected and I hit N to move the cursor to the start of the next event on that track and B to go back. Now let's say I want to make a cut in this region. Uh, I want to make the cut right here. Let's turn off the snap. And I want to make it right here. I can do so by pressing Alt or Option X. And I can also do that while playing back. Useful for post-production, for example. Now, if I want to play back uh, my production and if I want the arrangement to move with the cursor, I can press F to toggle the auto scroll. I can choose how it's going to behave uh, by clicking here. So stationary cursor is going to look like this. these ones are pretty cool. If I want to delete some bars from my project, I can do that. Let's turn on the uh, snap. Assign the left and right locators. I think these are custom. I've set them to control one and two. Like so. Now shift backspace is going to delete those. they are now gone. I'm going to undo that and say I wanted to add some bars. I can do that. And I assign the number of bars and the start point by the locators. And I press Control Shift E to insert time. Both of those are really helpful. So let's say I wanted to copy all of these uh, guys, let's say th this is a drum rhythm and I want to copy it. Uh, the easier way to do that would be to group 
all of these together and I can do that by uh, pressing Control G. They're now groups. And if I click one of them, I'm gonna click all of them and that makes it super easy to copy just like this. To ungroup something, Control U is the key to do that. Let's say I don't like these two tracks. I wanna delete them and I can do so by pressing Shift Delete like that. One of the really nice key commands in Cubase is the ability to find tracks, especially if you're working in a bigger template. So let's say I want to find a uh, horn, solo, solo horn. Um, I can find it, hit enter, and it's now selected. I may have to scroll to it, uh, but I can kind of get around that by going up and down. Let's see if it's gonna, yes. So going down ones and up ones is gonna move the screen as well. And now, there's a horn. This info line right here is super useful and if you ever don't see it anymore, you can press Control I for info to make it appear again. So if you've recorded something and uh, the, the name of the track was Audio 24 uh, and you now know that it's a shaker thing and you want that to uh, reflect on the regions as well, you can hit Shift Enter to rename the selected track and then press Shift Enter again for that name to be pasted onto the regions of the track. If you want to zoom one individual track, you can do that by hitting Z and turn it off again by hitting Z again. Some people like this, some people hate it. I love it uh, and I use it a lot. You can do it with multiple tracks as well. I use it at very specific uh, scenarios. If I'm copying something from this track to this track, but I, don't want to spend too much time uh, making sure that I uh, paste it on the right track. I select what I'm going to copy and then make the, that track super large so that I know oh, that that's an audio track. Let's do this so that I know once I get to the right track. And right now I'm using Option or Alt to copy something and also using Control to kind of lock it in place so it won't go to the, so it will stay in the same spot. All right, sometimes I use this feature uh, with track versions. If I'm testing out different solos for a track or different melody lines, different chords even, uh, you can also use it for it uh, if you have multiple takes on something. And to switch between those, first of all, you can do shift, control shift N or control shift D to either uh, make a new version or duplicate the one you are at. Uh, but to change between them, control shift G and age to cycle through them. A couple of quick ones, shift S will open up your project setup. It's useful uh, for changing uh, the video format, for example, uh, or making uh, negative bars um, in, in the beginning of the session, changing the sample rate, um, some metadata stuff. Open up your pool. Uh, you can do that by pressing Control P and that's gonna enable you to find missing files, delete stuff that you don't have in your session anymore and so on. Let's have a look at the F keys. Uh, if you press F1, you'll open up the help help website which is really good f2 will open up transport f3 is going to open up uh, your main mixer window you can have a second one if you want to mix console 2 and even a third one if you want it in the project window you can do it alt f3 so let's try that and it's gonna uh, open it up in the lower zone. F4 is your audio connections. Change some of your inputs or outputs or labels. That's where you do that. F5 is your media bay, 
where you can store all of your samples and sounds and rate them and do all sorts of stuff. Now, Shift F5 is opening the media bay and enables me to just start typing shaker. And that's gonna be a little bit quicker if you wanna search for a sample. F6 is your automation panel, as useful for a more mixing workflow. You can toggle all of the read uh, or uh, write uh, states of the different tracks on or off. F7 is direct offline processing, which is beautiful and enables me to add an EQ to this file. And it's now done that, it's, it's not using any processing power anymore for, for that. F8 is toggling the video uh, window. F9 and F10 is cycling between these different tooltips. And some of these I can change to by using the number keys, not on the numpad. But F9 and F10 cycles through them. F11, uh, I think this is, um, I think this is custom but this is my export and audio mix down. And F12 is my key commands. I've spent a lot of time in this window. And uh, as you can see, there's lots and lots and lots of commands that does not have a key command assigned to it yet, but they could have. So there's lots of possibilities for custom key commands and we'll get to some of them very soon. If you need to record something, uh, but you don't have a keyboard, you can press Alt K or Option K and have the on-screen keyboard activated. So, let me find something with sound. That's useful. It's using the QWERTY and the number keys. If you're like me and love coloring your project, you can go up to a track or select multiple of them and uh, find all your colors. But if you'd like, if you're gonna change uh, a lot of different tracks in one go, you might wanna uh, press Alt Shift C and make them appear as its own window. It's gonna uh, lose the labels this way, but it's really easy to do, the, do it a little bit quicker if you want to. One feature I love about Cubase is the ability to save as new version. You can find that here, save as new version. The key command for that is Control Alt S or Command Option S and it's gonna take uh, half a minute to do that. Here, some, some, I'm just telling you about it, I'm not gonna do it, but it's gonna save this uh, as an incre incremental number change. So this would be intro 06. Let's have a, another look at the numpad quickly. If I press the comma or the dot, I'm gonna return to start, that's super helpful. Play, playback, if I hit the return key, I'm gonna start playback. If I hit the zero, I'm gonna stop playback. And depending on uh, your settings, start playback and stop there. It's gonna stop at the same position if I press zero again, nothing happens, but if I press the dot, it's gonna move to the start. And for some reason it's, uh, also jumps to the uh, the first marker before it goes to the start of the session. If I wanna fast forward, I can hit the plus or the minus to go back. And if I wanna go faster, I can do that while holding shift. If I want to move uh, within the quantize note value, I can press control while doing plus and minus. If I wanna move the playhead to the beginning of a region, I can do that by hitting L like so. And uh, this is at the point where I'm gonna add in some custom commands. I've also done the key right of L, 
which is going to be different depending on where in uh, the world you live, to move the playhead to the end of the selected region. I can snap the beginning of a track to the playhead by pressing Control L, like so. Now we could talk about, I can talk about custom commands and macros for uh, a long time and I probably will do more videos on it. We could, for example, uh, have a look at one that I use all the time, which is uh, to enable or disable tracks, the selected tracks. Control Alt Space. And that's just what I've grown used to. I can uh, enable those tracks again whenever I want. I've also set up some pretty cool key commands for reversing. Control Alt Shift R. <laughs> and also if I want to do a uh, pitch bend, I've set that up to react to Control Alt P. I want to show you some MIDI stuff. So first of all, let's have a look at uh, a macro that I've set up that is called Key Editor Macro. Uh, a macro is a, a key command that does multiple key commands for you. So uh, I've set up one that does uh, open key editor in window. All right. And in under MIDI, it's going to show only the used controllers. And then it's going to zoom to the event. So it's going to show only the data that's there and it's going to blow it up. Uh, so that is easy to spot. So we can test that. Uh, the, my key command for that is Shift Z, and that has done that for me. Uh, I've now I now have one line uh, down here with a, it's called controller controller lane one controller lane, which is velocity. I can show or hide that that line by pressing Alt L. That's a standard key command, I believe. Um, in here, I can, we learned about quantize, I can uh, quantize the ends by uh, pressing Alt Q, I believe that's a custom one. Uh, but I want to show you if I go to some strings, they will have a lot more data on it. So right now I can select this section of strings hit shift Z again, it's going to open all of them. And now we have two lines, modulation and velocity. Cool. This has a separate solo button as well, works with S as well. So that you'll hear only the stuff that you've selected, pretty useful stuff. Uh, and we can find something that has a lot more This is a good example. Here we have a lot of different stuff. We have expression maps, velocity, modulation, expression, and vibrato. And it sounds, it actually doesn't sound at all because it isn't loaded. <laughs> but uh, again, I can show or hide all the control lanes. But the nice thing is everything that's shown here is in use. So I'm not wasting screen space on lanes that I'm not uh, using. I have some other uh, cool, cool ones set up. For example, open up the mixer, open up a bunch of different plugins. Um, I want to, I want to hide them all. I've set that up to react to Shift F12, and they're all gone. Another thing that I use religiously is the render in place uh, functionality. And I have two key commands for that one. That for me is control shift R. That's gonna uh, open up the options dialog. And that means I can do individual settings. Uh, I can also just do control R and that's gonna export uh, what I've selected with the, the settings that I used last time. Now that's done and it, it has exported that MIDI region to uh, audio and I love doing that because I like doing uh, uh, sound design to a sound and it's super helpful. <clears throat> 
and I can't do that as easily uh, if I'm using a MIDI track. These aren't set to this, these are custom as well. Uh, so these, I use these to jump to the beginning or the end of what I've selected in the locators. I think as default, they are uh, one and two on the number pad, but what I've changed all of those to, if you have a look here, I have changed all of those to change the note value of the quantizing section and the three toggles the triplet on and off. And this is from uh, working in Sibelius. That's kind of the same system. That's that's a notation program. Really nice to to have on your keys and readily available when you're quantizing or uh, it just sits under my fingers after working many hours in Sibelius. All right, I've I've chosen some of my favorite key commands that I use a lot. I probably forgot a lot of great ones that I also use. So maybe I'll make more videos like this and I'll try to um, talk more about the key commands I use in my videos um, just in general. Uh, but if I forgot a key command that you uh, would have included, why don't you tell me about it in the comments below. If you learned something, uh, why don't you hit the like button and uh, subscribe for more videos like this. I'll be back very soon. But until then, remember that there is always gold in everyone.